God sent his messenger Gabriel to Mary. Greetings! You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Very reassuring words, to be certain. But when you're frightened half to death by an unexpected visitor, they're a little hard to process in the moment. Mary wasn't sure what kind of visit this was going to be, good, bad, or, or what. And, and so the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Did you hear it? He said it twice. You have favor. Oh, well, what kind of person was this Mary that God Almighty paid attention to her? What kind of life have she lived up to this point that, that God would have high regard for her? Was she the, the kind of woman who is just so kind and patient with her family? Humble, soft-spoken, always ready with a word of encouragement for those who are her friends but also her haters. What is it about this woman that was the best choice of all the moms on the earth? Was she the kind of woman who uh, would just be so patient and, and never frustrated or exasperated with, with the just kids being kids? You know, and, and their sleepless nights and, and their runny noses and their coughs that just go on and on. And, 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 and she's, is she the kind of mom who just doesn't get tired. Not sleepy tired, but you know what I'm talking about, moms, tired of being the mom. What kind of woman so presented before God that he would say, you are the one? Well, unfortunately, the Bible does not reveal the heart of God in this matter. So that we might know exactly, oh, well, Mary was chosen for this or that reason. Well, in the silence, in the absence of an answer, it doesn't stop us from speculating of what kind of, of woman this was and answering for ourselves the why Mary question. In fact, she is held in such high esteem in the Roman Catholic Church that they have presented an answer of why Mary by saying that she was sinless. She was born sinless. She had an immaculate conception just like Jesus. An angel came to her mom too and said, and you're going to have a baby. She's going to be great. And, and lived her whole life without sin. And so being sinless, there was no reason for her to die. She was ascended back up into heaven. And there being so full of grace, she has grace to spare for you and me. Us sinners, in the hour of our need, she will pray for us, intercede for us, and there for us. There in heaven she reigns with her son Jesus, the King. As Protestants, we just kind of shake our heads and go, where are you getting that in the Bible? You've jumped the rails here at some point. But that doesn't stop Protestants from also speculating into the nature and the character of such a woman that would be chosen. She may not have been sinless, but certainly awfully close to the perfect mom, right? And a role model for any mother to follow after. I mean, come on. This is Mary we're talking about. And, and others have, have, or have taken Mary into the fold and said, no, she's our role model. Feminists of the past have taken Mary to be the one who did not need a man to define her. In fact, she was noticed by God all by herself. Thank you. In the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we have not completely ignored Mary, but we certainly have relegated her to the Christmas pageant. You got your shepherds, got your wise men, you have to have your Mary and baby, right? And Joseph. But her, her value and what she plays into the whole salvation story really is this niche of Christmas and no more. And, 
I mean, think about it. How many St. Mary Lutheran churches are there compared to St. Stephen, St. Andrew, St. Mark's? And yet, if you were to do a comparative analysis, objective, and place Mary in line with all of these men, you would see that, well, wait a minute, she really does play a more important role than, than any of these saints we've named our churches after. And, and even the gospel writers kind of give her a, a shortened version. Mark doesn't even include the Christmas story at all. And John, John, the disciple that Jesus loved, as he's hanging on the cross, says to John, this is your mom, and to his mom, this is your son, doesn't even mention Mary by name in his gospel. So what are we supposed to do with this woman? I would invite you to listen carefully to how Luke presents her. In his gospel, he does not exalt her up into the heights of heaven where she is almost a co-redeemer with Christ, a, a goddess hearing our prayers and dispensing grace. He doesn't even present her as the, the perfect mom. You mom should follow her. He doesn't present her as the independent woman. Instead, he has a much greater and more important role for her to fill and a place to be that is contemporary and relevant for every woman, every man, every Roman Catholic, every Protestant, every Lutheran. For Luke presents Mary as the ideal Christian. As she hears the announcement of the angel Gabriel, what does she do? She believes it. She entrusts herself to God and His care. And her life would be in danger and in peril many times. A sword would go through her own heart of pain and suffering for what would be done to her son. But she denies herself, making everything available to God, even her own body, so that His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Can a Christian, someone who follows after her son Jesus, can we learn a better response to the word of God than what Mary said? I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. This faith in God, this trust in his word, this love and this devotion, self-sacrifice and self-denial, these are all God-empowered actions from a heart that he has formed and will form in all of the followers of his son, Jesus. Jesus himself would affirm that this is the very pattern of discipleship and following him. He would do so a little bit later in Luke's gospel, chapter 12. Jesus is before this great crowd of people, and they're just loving it. Just like the angel said he would be great, he was. And people couldn't get enough of him. And there in that crowd with all the excitement of Jesus talking and healing and teaching, a woman just couldn't stop herself. She just had to shout out to Jesus and, and give him a big thumbs up. And, and what she said is a little bit awkward and maybe a little bit embarrassing, especially when you read it in the uh, original language, but we'll clean it up for you. She said, Jesus, Jesus, uh, blessed is the mother who gave you birth and who nursed you. That's kind of awkward for a grown man to hear in a public setting, you know, but obviously this woman thought it would just be great to be your mom, Jesus. She must be wonderful. And, and that was kind of the thinking back in that day, right or wrong, the, the, the women had their value and, and everything from the sons and the kinds of sons that they would produce. Jesus was a great man, so there must have been a great woman and mother behind him, uh, making him so. But as Jesus hears this, this wonderful praise from a, an admirer, he will not follow along in that line of thinking. And he rejects it outright, and he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. I'm sure that he esteemed his mother as a wonderful mother, and he would have other people do so, but it wasn't because of her character in the way that she raised him and being a good mom and patient and loving and kind. 
her blessedness, her favor before God was the fact of her devotion and faithfulness to the Word of God. In fact, Jesus will elevate any person to the same blessedness, greatness, favor, and love before God, even calling that person his mother, sister, or brother who hears the will of God and does it. For later, Jesus would say in Matthew's gospel, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here is my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father is my brother, sister, and mother. These are very comforting words to be sure that Jesus would elevate us to such a status of favor before God. So good, they're kind of hard to process when you actually think about your character and what you do and what you're like with your family and what you do and what you're like with your friends and, and at work, and school. You know, I... I can't really even force my heart to have that kind of devotion and love for God like Mary. You know, if, if Luke is presenting to us this, this great example to follow, I find it not very helpful or useful because I can't just say, let it be to me, Lord, whatever it is you want done, and then actually let it be. I, I will be looking for ways to kind of weasel out of what God wants and resenting the obligation that I have to do what He wants because I want to do what I want. This example of Mary that Luke presents would be impossible and frustrating and completely useless if the pattern and example were dependent upon you as you are with your heart with your strength and your spiritual maturity. But that's not the pattern. It's not you as you are. But look at what Luke presents. It doesn't start with Mary. It starts with God who proclaims his message. You are favored. He delights in you. Do, do you actually realize that? And hold that in your heart very dear, that God delights in you, favors you, wants you for all eternity as family. And, and then this God says, I want to be with you, and, and I am with you. Now, to have God with us is a pretty big deal, because for him to be with us, who could be against us? Who could condemn us if God is with us, on our side, who, who's protecting and, and, and caring for us, we would then be in an unshakable kingdom, and that's exactly what, G, what God says that his son has come to bring. He will sit on David's throne and reign forever and ever with peace and joy and love. You, who are highly favored, whom God is with, are in this kingdom. And here is where God works in our hearts to be able to say to whatever his word is, yes, Lord, let it be to me as you have said. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done and you have access to all of my things and my family, my body, my time. Let it, yes, Lord, let your word be fulfilled just all sounds so wonderful. How can it really be so? Mary asked that question too, right? And, and do you remember the answer? Was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give this conception of faith, and for her case, conception of Jesus, but in ours, Jesus will be born in us. He will dwell in us, and we in Him. And this withness, and this Christ-likeness and this love and devotion, it's all a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So it's so important then to take these words and live with them this week. Ponder them in your heart like Mary, that you are favored. God is with you. You are part of his unshakable kingdom that will not end. Amen. As part of that kingdom, then we stand to confess.